All right, so with this one, again, we're looking for the inverse. And first thing we have to think about is what is going to be uh, our restriction here? Well, here we have to have greater than zero for this. So two, 2x plus 3 equals 0 has to be greater than or equal to. Let's go ahead and put that in before we do it and just have to change it at the end. So it's going to be greater than or equal to 0 because we can't have a negative in here. So let's subtract 3. And so then we can go 2x is greater than or equal to negative 3 divided by 2. So x has to be greater than or equal to a negative 3 halves. So that's where it's restricted. Now the square root, it's going to just be, you know, um, uh, you know, if we have just a strict square root, it starts there and goes like that, but then we've, we've shrunk it and we've, we've shifted it to the left. And when we shifted it to the left, it's over here at negative one and a half. And so, you know, it's kind of something like that. All right. Now we can say, okay, now let's solve this. So y equals that. Now we need to get rid of that square root. So we have to square both sides. So y squared equals 2x plus 3. Now we'll subtract our 3. y squared minus 3 equals 2x divided by 2. And so x is going to be equal to a y squared minus 3 over 2. Okay. Now we swap it, and so we get y equals x squared minus 3 over 2. And so f inverse of x is equal to x squared minus 3 over 2. All right. Now, this is going to be uh, one to one, but only where? Well, what's going to happen is it's going to be having to be uh, greater than uh, the zero. So if we if we plot this, well, actually, let's let's go to our calculator. And so if we go to our calculator, uh, let's I don't know what these are, so let's delete them. We'll leave our x in here because that's that's going to give us a, a line. So let's put our original equation in. So square root of 2x plus 3. And our new equation we just found, which was uh, x squared minus 3 divided by 2. Okay. Now let's look at our graph. All right. So all it did is it moved it down there. So we can see that's what it did. And so we can't have negatives because if we have that, we're going to have not one to one. So we have to restrict it. Basically, x is going to be greater than or equal to zero. And if you see that, that's flipped over this axis. You know, it's flipped over, flipped over. And so everything looks good. So basically here, all we have to do is we have to say x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then if we do that, then we have the proper inverse. And again, here we had to have that x had to be greater than or equal to uh, that negative 3 halves. All right, what about this one? Well, this one is kind of like uh, a 1 over x function. And so, you know, if we think about 1 over x, you know, we have something like that. So when we move things left and right and stuff like that, that's not going to affect the overall shape. So this is one to one. So basically anything's going to work. And so if we rewrite this, y equals 3 over x minus 4. Now we can swap these two around and have x minus 4 equals 3 over y. And, and again, if we needed to, we could have taken this whole thing times x minus 4 and this whole thing times x minus 4. And at the same time, you know, multiplied by 1 over y, multiplied by 1 over y. And then we have those cancel, those cancel, and we end up with x minus 4 equals 3 over y. So all we did was we just swapped those because we know if we do a cross product, we'll, we'll get our answer. And so now add 4. So x equals 3 over y plus 4 change y equals 3 over x plus 4. We'll write it as the inverse. And this should be our answer. Now, is there going to be any restrictions? Well, we can't have x equal equal to 0 here. So obviously, that's, we can write that. But you know, that's, that's really the only restriction, because that's, that's kind of a given here. You know, that's something that it can't happen. 
And so that's going to be what that is. Now, this one here, x could not equal a positive 4 because what it happened is it shifted it over here. And so then the asymptote here is now there. And it's going to have going you know above and below here, but with the asymptote there. So you know x could not equal 4 in this case. Okay. All right, so this one is another quadratic. And with that, it says we have to be on the interval from negative 2 up to positive infinity. All right. So maybe let's plot this and kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, so let's kind of clear out that. Oops, well, I guess we can clear everything out. And so we have now x squared. And then we had plus 4x and then plus one and so that's what it looks like so right here is going to be our uh, uh value so maybe we need to do this to see if we can see it clearer yeah so here is going to be where our minimum is so we need to know what that is and so you know if we uh do this we could do a calc and say where's the minimum at and you know where's our left bound well, i don't know where the We must be way out to the right. Yeah, okay, there's x is 0. Okay, so we need to come all the way over to the left here. And we'll say that's our left bound. That's our right bound. And we'll just guess that. And what happened there? Something wrong happened. Our minimum. That's our left bound. That's our right bound. That's our guess. And negative 2, negative 3. So we know that it has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. But they were really nice in this problem. And they told us it had to be greater than or equal to the negative 2. So some problems are nice. Some problems don't tell you everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and solve this. And so now what are we going to do? Well, let's swap x's and y's. Because this is one of those weird kind of problems. So x equals y squared plus 4y plus 1. Now, there's not much we can do here. So let's get rid of x. So 0 equals y squared plus 4y. And then we have this 1 minus x. So I'll say plus 1 minus x. So I'm going to kind of put this together. Because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have our a, our b, and our c, because we're going to use that quadratic formula. And so y equals minus b, so minus 4, plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, so 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1 minus x, and then all over 2 times a, which is 1. Okay. So this is where we have something new that we I, we haven't seen too much or we haven't seen at all. We have this 1 minus x here. And so that goes in place of c. Now that gives us a minus 4 plus or minus the square root of. Now, minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. And then minus 4 times 1 is a minus 4. But we also have a minus 4 times a minus x. And so what happens is this is 16 minus 4 plus 4x, and that's all over 2. Now what happens? Well, this is a minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 is 12 plus 4x over 2. Well, here we can factor out uh, a perfect square, the 4. And so we have a minus 4 plus or minus square root of 4 times the square root of what's left over. Well, it's going to be a 3 plus x all over 2. Well, this is just 2. And so that leaves us with minus 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 plus x all over 2. Now, this 2 cancels 2 out of here. So maybe to make it easier, we'll cancel that 1, 1, 2, because we have to divide both of them by 2. And so that gives us a negative 2 plus or minus square root of 3 plus x. Okay. 
Now, if we have a minus 2 minus uh, 3 minus x, does that give us a positive? No, it's going to give us a negative, and we don't want the negative here. And so what we need to do is only use the plus. Okay, And so that gives us then y equals a negative 2 plus square root of 3 plus x. And so f inverse of x equals. Now here we can write this two ways, minus 2 plus square root of 3 plus x or uh, square root of 3 plus x minus 2. I caution against that one because if you're typing it in and you forget to arrow outside of your radical, you'll have a square root over that whole thing and then it'll be wrong and you'll say, well, how come I missed it? And, and the, the computer says, well, because you didn't actually get out. So this one is probably the safer bet as far as uh, putting it into your, uh, typing it into a uh, computer or something like that so you don't forget to uh, have outside of the, um, the radical, okay? Um, let's see, that should be all we need to take care of here. Uh, you know, we had to have be greater than negative two here. Now here, um, basically we have to be, x has to be greater than a negative three. Because if we have less than a negative three, it's gonna give us a negative square root and we're gonna get the imaginary numbers. And so we need to have x greater than or equal to that negative three. All right, so let's pause there.